Okay, perfect. So last talk for today, and afterwards we're all going to have some beer. Perfect. Um, so user interfaces without coding. That sounds good, but then again, it sounds bad. Is somebody else going to do our job or what? Wouldn't we be doing the coding? Um, Vaadin has been there since year 2000, and it has always provided a programmatic API for defining the user interfaces. And during the last couple of years, somebody started to think that Vaadin should really have a tool that would allow also other people than Java developers writing the actual user interfaces. And it's not just that as an idea of a tool that's a cool thing to have, but we as a company have received quite a bit of say, requests on having this kind of utilities around, mainly because today's web development world, not every people is just plain hardcore HTML, CSS guy, or a Java guy, but there are also people, people who are uh, enjoying more like user experience definitions, ways to define the UIs without really having to um, be so in depth with the actual uh, implementation procedure. And quite often these kind of uh, approaches are very beneficial for companies who are, for example, prototyping UIs, uh, who are thinking of ways how to construct and assemble different kind of UI compositions that can then later be used within a real projects as well. And Vaadin, since version 7.4, has provided support for something called declarative syntax, which is kind of an XML. It's not really an XML, so people who hate XML can't really say that it's XML. Um, then again, it's not exactly HTML either, but it's something in between. Uh, back in the day, Vaadin used to have an Eclipse plugin called Visual Designer, and it did not have anything to do with today's Vaadin Designer. But back in the day, um, this Visual Designer was actually editing Java code directly, which of course is a huge problem if somebody modifies it in the between, changes names, the conventions, all the basic things there. So to be able to read back the design after somebody was modifying that was completely impossible. And of course now, ever since the declarative syntax has been there, it's rather natural that today's designer application reads and writes um, in this kind of declarative syntax that can also be reopened, but still without sacrificing the actual Java uh, pipe safety, as the designer is still producing a Java file for added ability to actually interact with the UI elements that you have dragged in with the designer. So it has like, like two sides for the people who are working with how the UI looks like, and then for the code part, the actual application developers who then integrate the logic of the UI with the created design. Um, again, this is my one and only slide. Suspicious. So uh, let's just get directly into it and see how. Uh, Declarative syntax. Like. Um, how many of you can make a Vaadin UI with a uh, text field and a button? I do hope everybody. Uh, how many of you can do it in uh, declarative syntax? There's one brave guy. Great. So uh, declarative syntax would be. In, okay, not that much. Mm. Vertical. Yeah. And what we could then do is that we say we text and then maybe caption should be. All right, then we might, for example, want to have a password field that would. Our password. I don't know why the server connection keeps on failing sometimes, maybe it's a problem. Um, and then we might, for example, have a button that just says login. And there we have uh, Vaadin 
UI with three mentioned components. And because I told you this is not XML, it's not XML, you can say uh, spacing right here, get the actual order between the components, and you can also say margin, and you get the margins for your, for your component. So this is declarative syntax. Uh, when I was talking about people who enjoy doing designs, I didn't mean people who enjoy XML. I don't think there are people who enjoy XML. They don't exist. Um, but this is not XML. That's declarative syntax. So what is the purpose, what is the benefit of having this kind of support uh, other than having some product that generates this kind of XML? Can you think of any other use case? At least one that I can think of is from a past project where the views were very dynamic and there was a requirement in the project that the administrators need to be able to configure how forms look like in an application. For example, there it's very convenient to have an XML syntax or almost XML syntax that allows the administrators to change the look and feel of their forms on the fly without having to really have any Java guy changing the actual code. Um, another reason is, of course, that this is really uh, sort of hierarchical structural syntax. So you see the actual structure very clearly. It is nested, layered structure. Uh, you can stack components inside one another exactly as you would do it with the um, normal Java API, but just a different way to produce the Varden UI without really having to code it. Um, I guess that's enough about the declarative syntax. It's there, you can use it if you need it. Um, it has its own purposes, own benefits. It's make it, it makes it possible to, let's say, make highly customizable Varden UIs on the fly without having to touch the Java code. Um, more interestingly, rather than showing it here, we could implement something similar with Varden Designer. So what we can do is that we could, for example, make uh, ourselves a little login form. So what we do is that with Vardin uh, Eclipse plugin installed, it comes bundled with the latest Vardin designer, which is today 107. Uh, I, of course, have the plugin set up here. So we can just make a new Vardin design and call that, for example, login form. And from the template selection, we can then define which kind of base layout we would like to have. Um, quite often, the people doing the designs would like to have the absolute positioning at the ground level of the design, because this lets them position the components the way they want. Then again, Java guys much more prefer having, for example, vertical or horizontal layout at the bottom, because it's programmatically more, let's say, straightforward to say where the components are when you can just add them after one another, define the spacings, and maybe with little theming configure how much there is spacing in between of the actual components. So it's a bit of trade-off, but let's just assume that we're now using vertical layout and base our login form for that. Um, what Vardin Designer will do for us is a login form HTML. So we can just take this and grab it, drag it around. Uh, we can have our little tool palette at the top. So we can make, for example, a, our text field. Just select it from there and drag it in. Uh, then we could take our password field, drag that in as well. And finally, we could take the button. Hope that we had a little bit so why did I quite initially? And then we could take the button and just drag that in as well. And well, okay, it's there. It's not exactly very beautiful at the moment, but we can hopefully fix that. So with the designer, there is a properties panel, and the properties panel has things like name, style name, caption, icon, enabled, visible status, all the same things that you have from uh, the server-side API available as well. 
So uh, we could just say that the caption of the first one is the name, then the caption of the second field is password. By the way, this is now text field. It could equally well be password field. Uh, we have the button, we have the layout, everything that. Then we can define some layouting operations so we can make the uh, vertical layout that we have at the bottom to take the required minimum space. So sort of undefined size as you would call it from the uh, Java API point of view, but just to expand it as much as the components need. Other things that we can enable here is the spacing and the margins. So now it already starts to look like something. And finally, we could, for example, take the button, call it something else than a button, just login, for example. And we can also use the styling here. So just if we know the CSS class selectors as they are defined in our theme, we can just tell the login button that this should, for example, be primary. And immediately you see the results with your designer. So we've at least found that this is great help for UX guys who are wanting to make very quick uh, prototypes of their UIs and of their applications. Um, one of the nice features that thing has is that now that we are inside a vertical layout, somebody wants to, for example, add the <coughs> forgot password uh, link next to the login button. So now that I have the vertical layout in the uh, Java code, I would have to make one horizontal there. Then I would have to change the ordering, how the components were positioned. What designer gives you there is that we can select the button and we can select wrap width and then, for example, horizontal layout. So this will automatically put the uh, button inside the mentioned horizontal layout. Um, after which we could, for example, take a link, just drag that in. Uh, Try to hit also the horizontal layout, put it right there. Um, then, for example, uh, find the sizing for the actual link. We could call it password. So, let's say from Java developer point of view, kind of basic things, but then again, from designer point of view, uh, features that might be uh, valuable for, um, let's say, for quick prototyping purposes and for just being able to define the UIs before the actual uh, Java guys get their hands in them. Um, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Um, anyhow, so this is, this is practically how you can make designs on small scale. Well, let's say then you are, of course, interested in how this looks like in my declarative syntax. So from the above, you can just click the edit mode and see what kind of output the designer has produced for us. Um, we have the exact same structure here as uh, given, and we can, for example, just edit, edit the structure here. So we can just take, for example, the uh, automatic sizing right there, save it, and go back to the actual uh, preview mode and see how the uh, predefined width of the uh, horizontal layout was changed. Mm, another, I think, beneficial feature, of course, is that you equally, as you did with the Chrome developer tools and with the responsive web design ideas, were able to see how the application looks on various resolutions. The uh, designer, of course, supports that. Well, this thing here is so small that you can't really see much of a difference, but you could flip around the uh, resolution just to see the device orientations, all that. Um, another thing that I think is worth mentioning is that you can observe the design in an external uh, device. So if you are one of those cool UX guys who has those tablets and phones and all the things in his test rig at his work, work desk. Uh, what he would like to do is that he will just scan this code with the device and he can automatically immediately see the results of his design changes in an external device. So if you have a smartphone that's capable of reading the QR code, you can try that. Um, 
not going to give you very much time. But I can, for example, open this just in a browser, um, which shows the design right here. Then what I could do is that I'll take Firefox, another browser right here next to it, paste the same URL, see the design also here. And then if, for example, in my uh, actual designer, um, I went on and moved the, uh, well, let's say, hmm, well, maybe it changed some, some captions or, or whatever kind of, of things. Uh, Now it beat me. Demo effects always. There it is. So what I can do uh, is of course that I could maybe just uh, change, for example, the parameters uh, here. And after that, immediately see that they are also updated into the external observers. So this way, we have tried to define the workflow of a UX guy working with UI des designs so that he could pretty uh, interruption-free see the results in all of the supported devices immediately. Another thing that you can do with this is that you could, for example, uh, take your uh, theme file, which I happen to have right here, and I could, for example, add additional uh, CSS selectors, for example, like this, and just say color red, then store that, after which I could go here and say that I would like to have the style name red applied for this, and then just refreshing my Oops. and the password, forgot password link has now switched to red, as well equally is the uh, both browsers. So this way you can, in a live mode, theme your application um, so that you actually see the end results. Other things you could do is that, for example, from uh, Valo, variables which are documented in the uh, Valo API in but in documentation page, you could just change some of the commonly known variables, for example, the uh, order radius of the uh, all the components in general, and just see the end result applied to the designer. Immediately. Okay, we have the design. Then what? Uh, probably we would like to have this somehow in use. So how would we use this? Um, what Designer gives us is a login form Java file. And this is put into the uh, actual package in which I created the design, and the corresponding HTML file is put under the resources folder um, with the same sort of package path. Um, the point here is that this file is now extended from the vertical layout as that was the template of my design on which I based it on. And it is defined to be a design root and auto-generated with the comment that do not edit this file. So then for the first time when I saw this, I asked, okay, well, if I can't edit the Java file, how is the Java guy supposed to actually do something? Um, so how he can do something? is, of course, uh, first by enabling the certain fields from my design to be linked with this Java file. So if I go back to the actual design and click, for example, the user at the top, I see a name property. And if I, for the name property, say, for example, username, and for the password property, I say password, and for my login button, say login, I see that within the outline, little arrow icons appeared. And this means that these fields or these components are now bound with the actual uh, Java file. So what the designer did is that it added the mentioned components 
into the Java file, and by default, they are now protected. So this indicates that somebody thought and planned and designed that the guys who are using this actually extend from this class. Of course, the designer is editing this class, but not the classes that might be extended from this one. And with that approach, you are free to do any kind of changes into your Java, co Java code so that you are accessing the protected fields from an extending class, and you can then use the extending class in any kind of context within your application that you like. Um, what that means then in practice is that we could, from this, um, for example, make some kind of little test view and see if we can integrate that with our uh, test application. Uh, of course, it doesn't make much sense to have a login view in an application that doesn't have support for login, but just for the sake of simplicity, what we could do is that we make login view bean, um, which is a way to define our CDI bean for our example application. And we would, for example, extend this from, well, for example, from the vertical layout. Um, this comes back down to the things that I was talking about this morning, so about the viewing mechanisms. So we would implement a view interface. We would say that this is CDI view for uh, login. And it has a menu item, which we're now showing in the menu just to be able to access that. Of course, it doesn't make much sense to have login view in the menu, but just for the sake of example, let's put it there. Let's give it some kind of an icon. For example, from font awesome font icons, um, for example, anchor. And then we can define order. So let's say that this should be the fifth item in the menu. Um, then we, of course, want to implement the view uh, from the Vardin uh, navigator package. And then finally, the enter method. Um, so this is just a very basic way to make ourselves a view. But what to do there is then um, our way to connect the actual login design. So now, for example, in this place, I could extend from my design, or I could extend from the vertical layout. So maybe a better option would be that I would just extend from my uh, login form design. Still tell that this is actually an application view. So designer is not limited to implement only some forms or model pop-ups or whatever. You can implement entire views of your application. Um, with these things in place, server restart is in order. So we will just have our uh, deployment, launch it, and see if Wildfly is our friend. And what should happen is that in our local deployment, we have a new item at the bottom with the fancy anchor sign. And there's an exception. Where would we go without exceptions? Um, unable to find design file. Oh, exactly, of course, because the design file is now in a different place. So, of course, it must be positioned within the same package that holds the corresponding uh, design file. Sorry about that. So, let me quickly restart and see. Have better luck. Butterfly isn't particular favor of me at this point, but it deletes some of my beans. Third time's the charm, I hope. Um, there is actually a way to read the design uh, with the design root. So, um, sorry, just a second. Where are you? 
Save the UI view products. This is save the UI view product. Okay, that's unfortunate. Oh wow, why is it in test resources? That's an interesting question. Hey, good point. Thanks for pointing that out. So, um, change this. Resources. be there. Not exactly sure what went on there. So or better luck this time. I'll show you the system on how to read the actual XML system. Right wants this to be <coughs> okay. Once again. Then let's just once more rebuild everything, just in case problems right there. Let's hope everything starts. So the login. is now within the Sources, of course. He opens up here, he still looks correct. Then, if we get here, there it is. So finally, thank you for pointing that out. Um, so, with little problems, this thing um, demonstrates you the ability of using, let's say, a completely external tool from regular Java development point of view that still makes it possible to actually create concrete uh, views and UIs and quite effectively bind them with your application without really having to integrate them, for example, with the menu or anyhow register mentioned views. Um, one more thing that I'm interested in showing to you is the data binding capabilities of this together with Bodin. So what we're going to do next is that we'll make ourselves another little design. Um, might have been that I accidentally created it in the wrong place initially, so that's why it probably went to the actual um, test folder, but it doesn't really matter. Let's make ourselves a new design and call this, for example, the uh, product editor design. Um, it's in the test. Oh, why does it go? Perfect. There's probably some something wrong with that. Um, anyhow, so let's just make ourselves a little uh, example editor that would allow us to uh, modify the products that are listed in our product view. So for this, we're going to need, for example, a text field. Um, in addition, we, for example, want to have a text area for the product's description. And then finally, uh, for example, uh, the product DTO, the product listing DTO, uh, or let's say the product edit DTO that is corresponding the um, model of 
how I can edit my product before I store it um, has, for example, fields called name, description, and price sends. So there is a long type of field that indicates the price of the product in sense. And I, of course, want to show some kind of field that is able to display the price with reasonable euro pricing. Um, what designer is also able to do is that it can do a component scan on my class path and find, for example, my custom components. So what I've implemented uh, is an euro currency field. Uh, if we have a look at that, it's very simple and straightforward uh, custom field implementation for type long, which means that the data value of this field uh, can be bound into a property of type long. Um, it's using a simple converter that will convert this uh, long type into a string representation. And then it's using that value inside of an internal text field that is hidden within the actual uh, component. So because now this component is part of the uh, class path of my um, design, I can just find the actual component, drag that in as well, and then I could simply uh, call these fields by the name um, as they are given within the DTO. So the binding should be um, the edit DTO. So let's just double check. So name, description, and price sense. And if we now use the exact same naming conventions here, um, and this one is twice these three, then just very quickly captions. All right, uh, storing that. Then we could go into our little product or pop up, which is our way to just make a view scoped pop up inside the product view that we show up when we want to modify the um, actual given product DTO from the table. Um, so we are extending from something called abstract pop-up editor that has very simple method bind design. And what bind design is doing here is that it's practically binding the member fields of given component by their name to the item properties bound for our field group. And afterwards, it's just adding the mentioned component into uh, our field layout. Um, what this bind member fields essentially does is that in our product editor design, which is now the Java file that designer generated, we have three properties, name, description, and price sense, as I gave them in the actual uh, design. And in my DTO, product edit DTO, I have the corresponding fields. So the field group will now automatically attempt to discover the properties from my item, which is the pro uh, product edit DTO, and bind them with the given field uh, sign as it is. So storing everything and still going to the uh, product edit pop-up and just saying here that bind design product And that should be enough. Again, if alpha is out of mind. You should see some kind of product editor associated with the product view, being able to bind the properties of the DTO directly into the DTO. So yeah say it works. Um, now we can, for example, see that the description is null, and this is because the uh, null representation of the text area component is going to be. Um, we will quickly have to test if it works. So if this is 10 euro cents, actually went there. 
with this kind of an approach, you could virtually uh, share application development work for or between developers and the actual designers who have more passion in making things look good rather than just looking at the Java code. And once agreeing on a common interface, how you could communicate in the project, uh, it goes quite natively through the Java file generated by the designer. So this is the place that both sides participating in the project should agree on what kind of naming is used, um, what kind of DTOs, for example, we have. And the DTO use case is, I would say, pretty good match for <coughs> fields that are, uh, or let's say, editors that are created with designer. Because then you could immediately create a DTO that corresponds to the current design. And just with some very simple abstract base classing, could still have uh, abstraction level so that you could just find your design produced by the other designer team and then use that with your actual application. Um, you asked how the uh, content of the XML is read. So in the Java file that is the design root, there is a static method read design that reads the actual file here. And this now, of course, assumes that file is within the same package as is designed once it's in a proper folder and not in a test folder. So normally you don't have to write any code to be able to read the actual file content. And with the, let's say, uh, way how designer works, how it likes to have the Java file untouched by uh, developers, because this file will always be overwritten is exactly that, that you can extend from this file, or you can use this within another component. For example, the uh, abstract pop-up editor that binds the design with this. Right. Um, in general, I think we covered all the basic parts of designer. Um, at least on the level of what features we've so far uh, considered being uh, valuable for our users and shown how, for example, the uh, designs can be associated with reasonable to little amount of work with existing applications. So from that point of view, um, this kind of, of way of defining the UIs is something that we hope people in the future might, for example, spend more time looking into as, at least according to the measurements that we've done internally within the company, new people starting with Vardin who are not familiar with the Vardin APIs beforehand are quicker making designs with the designer than writing similar kind of visual representation with Java code. So this might, especially for new developers, be an interesting tool to use. Regarding designer, this is everything I wanted to tell you. Uh, all these examples are part of the example project in GitHub. Um, I'll just quickly put up the link there. Would you at this point have any questions about designer or you like to um, currently with designer no so the question was whether you can use the international internationalization and resource bundles um, currently at the framework level in general <coughs> there is no official support for translation management I think quite common way to do that is to define the translations in the resource bundles and write your own Java code that'll read them from there with some kind of translation keys. Um, of course, then the question is that how you can associate the translation keys with the designer output is something that right now I can't answer. 
but it's a feature that will most likely be required in the future. Better question. Yeah, so whether it's possible to have some stub and mark data within the grid. Uh, yes, so designer will up to some extent support ability to add columns and data rows into the grid, but that support is on some extent rather limited. So if you have a very dynamic set of data, currently that kind of data is not very easily representable within the grid. Is it possible to translate designer code into Java code? So you mean from, um, yeah, well, could probably be possible, but currently is by no means supported by the product. But that's one option, of course. So the only integration that designer at this point does with the um, XML-ish HTML uh, is, the, is the Java file with the product field values. Okay, so thank you everybody and let's continue with the questions in the Q&A session.